So look, it's been one of the most important space missions in recent history, but now after 12 years, the European Space Agency will end the Rosetta mission by crash landing it on a comet that it's been observing. It's an extraordinary it's idea, amazing. isn't it? It's amazing. It's so exciting. Yeah, Ranveer has more. Ranveer. I do, yeah. So this is a mission that cost uh, a billion pounds. It's going to come to an end in just a few hours' time. So for the past two years, this is when you've probably heard most about Rosetta. It's been orbiting and observing a comet. In a bid to help all of us, including the scientists, of course, learn more about the origins and evolution of our solar system. In 2014, it dropped a lander called Philae onto the surface. You might remember this. And it's been sending information back. But then scientists lost contact with it just three days after that lending. Then earlier this month, they eventually found Philae again. Um, so now, by crash landing, Rosetta, as is going to happen this morning, scientists are hoping to capture some really stunning images as it goes in of the comet and collect important information uh, as Rosetta heads towards the surface of this comet. And, of course, the collision is necessary. Why? Well, because the comet is now heading so far away from the sun that Rosetta's solar panels, uh, which make it go, won't be able to generate enough power to keep it functioning. I almost sound like an expert, but I know you have a real one. <laughs> we do have a real expert over here, yeah, and she'll see to the bottom of your uh, veiled expertise. Uh, space journalist Sarah Crellis is Hello. with us. Um, it was very good, by the way. I'd like to was, point there, out. There yeah, you go. Great. You were very Thank good, there. You. You you <laughs> yes, yeah, you blagged it very well. Um, let's talk about this mission, because this spacecraft... It, we're talking about a collision, but actually it's all going a little bit slow and that is yeah, not quite as dramatic as it It's not a collision, it's going at about walking, uh, walking pace. So um, this, uh, the Rosetta spacecraft wasn't actually designed to land on a comet, but scientists didn't really know what to do with it at the, do with it at the end. So uh, instead of just leaving it in a graveyard orbit and it just becoming a, a piece of what is known as space junk uh, and leaving waste in space, they decided to do a huge feat of engineering and actually direct it towards the comet and following in the little footsteps of Philae Lander, which landed on the comet back in 2014, actually slowly collide with the comet. As soon as it hits, it will break and its systems will shut down. But the information we're going to be able to get from that, that last moment of the mission, is just going to be incredible because the section they've chose to land on has all these like goosebumps almost, like these lumps and bumps. And we think those are actually... Oh, I suppose the best word for them is like embryos of baby comets and it might tell us more about how comets actually form because wow. we know so little about space in our solar system. We've been going into space for just over 50 years and you think you know so much but actually our knowledge is limited. We haven't been back to the moon in more than 40 years so we're only just starting to scratch the surface of what is to come. This was Europe's Apollo moment uh, and this is people's life's work we're seeing come to an end today and the next step in putting together that, you know, these pieces of the jigsaw puzzle which is answering fundamental questions of how did we come to be? Why are we here? Why mm. is there life on Earth? Are we alone in the solar system? Are we alone in the universe? So this mission is incredible and it's inspiring as well and hopefully it will inspire a new generation of scientists. I find space very exciting, all the space stuff, but I can see why others find the new stuff hard to get their head around because when you think of landing on the moon, mm. that's so yeah. tangible, isn't it? Um, and when you hear, you know, the amount it costs, a billion pounds, then you think, oh, my goodness me, what can something so little and so technical sounding reveal? Well, absolutely, and I think it's right to question the cost, but you've got to remember, for example, in, in the UK, for every pound you put into space research, you get £10 back. You're generating innovation, generating technology. You're also pushing forward science and creating jobs and... We went into space not to explore space. I mean, that's a tangential part of it, mm. but actually to learn more about life here on Earth. To, wow. You know, the most important picture we got back from the Apollo moon landings was the Earthrise picture, where you see the Earth rising over the surface of the moon, just like we see the moon from Earth. Yeah. And it, that's just an incredible thing. So, yes, it is difficult to, to comprehend, but actually we're in a new era of space exploration. We're seeing a resurgence of interest in space. We had a lull after Apollo. There wasn't the money, there wasn't the interest, but now we've got private companies looking at mining asteroids yeah. and, and sending tourists into space. So, Sarah, we're running out of time, but what would you think is going to be the legacy of the Rosetta mission and in terms of what we've discovered? In terms of what we've discovered, I mean, we now know that this comet has potentially the ingredients which might have seeded life with Earth, different to what we found on Earth, but we do think that, yes, comets might have actually collided with a very, very young Earth and actually created life on Earth, which is just absolutely mind-blowing. On top of that, kids who are at school now getting ready for school this morning, they, if they become a scientist, will be studying the results of Rosetta in 20, 30 years' time. I mean, we can't even imagine what we're going to find from this mission. There's just so much information which has come out of it. And also just inspiring a next generation to explore deeper into the solar system because it really is the start of a new era in exploration. It's going to be an emotional day for everybody, isn't it, that involved? Sarah, thank you very much for joining us this morning.
Now, coming up from big screen bad boy to TV detective. There he is, Acton Old Clark will be here in a couple of minutes.